All right, so this video, it's, I uh, apologize, it's a little bit late, but this is going to talk about the uh, set, the, the three questions in the set that we did, uh, which dealt with graphing. We have to worry about completing the square, uh, and then graphing is, is the one thing that, the, 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 another focus of what they wanted. So this is question number seven. I'm going to do question number eight over here, and then I'm going to come back and do question number ten. Those are the only, only three that we really need to worry about that we worried about in class. So we're continuing the process of completing the square. What's the process? We're going to divide A and move C. Well, when we divide by 1, nothing changes. But we still go through the process. Now, when we divide A and move separate C, at this point, we're making what's in parentheses a perfect square. How do we do that? We take half of the middle term and square it. So half the middle term, 2 squared, which is 4. I apologize for the uh, noise there. It's during lunch here. I'm really, I'm adding 4. So if I'm really adding 4, what am I subtracting? Well, I have to multiply that 4 times that A value, which is 1, to tell me how much I really have to subtract. Now I can write it as a product of squares. X plus or minus something squared. Go back to the sign in between the first two numbers, it's minus. The H value becomes what I took half of, it's my half of my B value, which is two. And one minus four is negative three. So this tells me my H and K. So I can find my vertex, which, which if you remember, my vertex, if it's X minus, it shifts to the right. So two and negative three becomes my vertex. So I'm going to plot that, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2 and negative 3. And then the last thing I want to look at is, well, my, my axis of symmetry, AOS. My axis of symmetry is the same as the x value of the vertex, so x equals 2. It's kind of good that we plot that. I know it helps me keep things symmetrical. And then my pattern. Where, what's my pattern? Well, my pattern is 1, 4, and 9. So I'm going to start at my vertex, and I know I'm going through this kind of quick, but I don't want to make a long video. If you start at the vertex, if you move right 1 and up 1, you're, on, you, you, you're essentially on your graph. Right 2 and up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right 3 and up 9, well this was 4, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again, pause if you have to, or go back and re-watch that. But I'm going to complete that same process, or repeat that same process on the other side here. I'm going to go left 1 and up 1. I'm going to go left 2 and up 4. And what you should begin to notice is I'm even. Left 3 and up 9. And again, I'm even. I'm three on one side, three on the other, two on one side, two on the other, and so on. And then there's my graph. This point right here, zero and one, should be my y-intercept. And if I look at my original equation, c is one. So I know I've graphed it correctly. Moving on to the second problem. Again, divide a and move c. So x squared plus 2x plus something, and then 5 minus something. This originally is not a perfect square. Why? Because half of 2 would be 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 is not 5. I'm actually 4 more than what I need to be. So make it a perfect square. 2 divided by 2 squared equals 1 squared, which is 1. I'm really adding 1, okay? Because I multiply that 1 times the a value, which in this case is 1. So I subtract 1. 5 minus 1 was 4. Remember I said we were 4 more then? So now it's write it as a product of squares. x plus or minus. We'll go back to your original. It's plus. h, that's 1 because it's half of what I took. 5 minus 1 is plus 4. So now I can, I can find my vertex. My vertex is negative 1 and 4. Remember it's the opposite. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1, because it's the same as the x value. And my pattern. My pattern is 1, 4, and 9. That doesn't change. Remember my inputs, 1, 2, and 3. That's If you'll notice, I'm moving right 1, up 1, right 2, up 4, right 3, up 9. 
So find that vertex. Negative 1, positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right there. My axis of symmetry is along that vertex. So I'm going to draw that. That, again, tries to help me keep things symmetrical. From the center, from my vertex, I move right 1, up 1. Right 2, up 4. 2, 4. Right 3, up 9. 9 is off of my graph unless you drew your axes down here a little ways. I didn't have that luxury. There's half of it. If this is one unit to the right, there's another point, one unit to the left. The second point I drew, if it's two units to the right, there's one, two units to the left. Or, left one, up one. Left two, up four. Left three, up nine. This point would be three units to the right. I'd have another one, three units to the left. Okay, I know, I know I'm doing that kind of quick. But again, I want to give you, make sure you get the same as what you would in class. And this is exactly what we did in class. Now, the last one here, this creates a bit of an issue because of A being a half. I still divide by a half. I divide A by the first two and move C. Well, think about it. What is a half divided by a half? A half, anything over itself is one. What is one divided by a half? I know a lot of people are thinking, gee, one divided by a half is equivalent to one. No, you couldn't be any more wrong. If we said it was 1, think about when I distribute back in, because I have to divide A and move C. If I distribute this back in, I should end up with what I start with, right? Well, a half of times x squared is a half x squared. Half of 1 multiply, half of 1 is not 1. Half times what number gives me 1? Half times 2. Okay, so how did I get 2? Well, 1 divided by a half can be rewritten as 1 divided by a half. When you're learning fractions, keep, change, flip. So keep, change, 2 over 1. 1 itself is a fraction, 1 over 1. And if I multiply, I get 2 over 1. Right? That's what makes this whole problem hard. I mean. One divided by a half is not a hard concept. Make what's in parentheses a perfect square. Two divided by two squared, because that's the second part, right? I've, I've divided A move C. So two divided by two is one. One squared is one. So I'm adding one in here. How much am I really adding? Well, go over here. Now it's a multiply. Here I divided. Here I multiply. Half of one is a half, so I really have to subtract a half. So now I can rewrite it as a product of squares. One half x plus or minus. We'll look at that sign in my original. It's minus, so it's minus. What did I take half of? I took half of two and I got one. Five minus a half is plus four and a half, or 4.5. All right, so my vertex. This is the last, last bit of it here. What's my vertex? Remember, be cautious. One and 4.5. Yeah, I converted that to a decimal, no big deal. My axis of symmetry is x equals 1. That's going to help me out. So I'll x equals 1. That's my axis of symmetry. My vertex is 1 and 4.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. There's my vertex. And now I have to look at my pattern. This changes. Why does it change? Well, normally it's 1, 4, and 9. But the A value tells me otherwise. Hopefully, I'm hoping you can see this. Normally, I would go over 1, over 1, up 1. But because the pattern is times a half, it gets cut in half. So I'm going to go over 1 and only up a half. That lands me at 2 and 5. Normally, I'd go over 2 and up 4, but I'm going to go up half of 4, which is 2. So from here, this is just where the thought comes in. Over 2 and up 2. 1, 2. I'm halfway in between 6 and 7. I should be. And then half a 9, which is 4.5. So right 3. 1, 2, 3. And up 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and up a half. Lands me nice and evenly on my grid. There I go. 
Again, the nice thing about the axis of symmetry is I can mirror that stuff over one, over two, over three, but let's repeat the process. Over one, up a half. Over two, up two, so one, two. And over three, and up four and a half. One, two, three, four, and up 0.5. The hard part is you have to stop and think about what you're doing, all right? So again, review that if you need to ask questions. We'll, we'll cover the pattern thing uh, probably a lot more.